In this lesson, we're going to work on comparing rational numbers. Now before we begin, let's make sure we understand exactly what those words mean. So first, we have rational numbers. Rational numbers include integers, fractions, and some decimals. It includes terminating and repeating decimals. Another way to think of it is that rational numbers include any number that can be written as a fraction. So even if it doesn't start out as a fraction, but we could write it as a fraction, then that means it's a rational number. When we're comparing numbers, we're determining if one number is greater than, less than, or equal to another number. So we're going to use these symbols, the greater than, less than, or equal to symbols. So here's some tips for comparing rational numbers. It's usually easier to compare numbers of the same type. For example, it's easier to compare two numbers that are decimals or two numbers that are fractions. So when we go through our examples, that's one of the strategies we're going to use to make sure that they're both the same type of number. And when we're comparing two fractions, we want to make sure they have the same denominator. Once they have the same denominator, it becomes really simple to see which fraction is greater or less than the other. And when we're comparing decimals, we want to make sure that they end with the same place value. So if one fraction goes out to the hundredths place, it's helpful if the other fraction also goes out to the hundredths place. For our first example, we'll compare two decimal numbers. On the left, we have 7.9, and on the right, we have 7.953. Now notice that both numbers go out to different place values. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that these decimals do go out to the same place value. So I'm going to copy these numbers over and I'm going to make sure that the decimal points line up on top of each other. That makes sure that all the digits of the same place value are lined up and it really makes it easier when we're comparing decimals. So notice our first number, which we can read as seven and nine tenths, only goes out to the tenth place. Our other number, seven and nine hundred fifty-three thousandths, goes out to the thousandths place value. So we can make sure that both numbers go out to the thousandths place by adding two zeros at the end of our first number. Now we can go and start comparing one place value at a time. When we're comparing decimal numbers, we first want to start with the whole number part, focusing on the numbers that are to the left of the decimal point. And in this example, both numbers have seven as their whole number. They both have the same digit there, so that's not very helpful in seeing which number is greater or less than the other. So now we'll move on to the next place value and look at the tenths place. And both numbers have nines. That doesn't help us to see which number is greater or less than either, so let's keep going. Now we'll look at the hundredths place value. Now we can finally see that the numbers have different digits there. One number has a zero and the other number has a five in the hundredths place value. Zero is less than five, so that means our first number is less than our second number. Seven and nine tenths is less than seven and nine hundred fifty three thousandths. For our next example, we have a fraction and a decimal. Three over 25 compared to eight hundredths. We want to make sure that 
both numbers are the same type though. We could make sure that both numbers are fractions or we can make sure that both fractions are decimals. And in this video, we're actually going to compare both methods. But first, we'll make both numbers into decimals. Our number on the right is already a decimal, so let's focus on changing our fraction into a decimal. We'll take our 3 over 25 and set it up as a division problem, doing 3 divided by 25. To set this up, we need to add a decimal point at a 0 after the 3 in the dividend. Now we can carry out our long division. So 25 goes into 30, we'll treat that 3, 0 as a 30, one time. 25 times 1 gives us 25, we subtract, we have a remainder of 5. We'll need to keep going until we have no remainder. So let's add another 0 to our dividend, bring that down. Now 25 goes into 50, 2 times. 25 times 2 is 50, subtract that, and we have no remainder. We can add our 0 in front of our decimal point, and now we can see that our fraction of 3 25ths is equal to 12 hundredths as a decimal. So let's write that down so we can see it larger. Now we're comparing 12 hundredths to 8 hundredths. And we can see here that 12 hundredths is greater than 8 hundredths. So that means, looking at our original numbers, that 3 25ths is greater than 8 hundredths. Now we're going to compare the same two numbers, but this time we'll use a different strategy. We're going to make both numbers into fractions with the common denominator. So our number on the left is already a fraction. Let's focus on making our decimal into a fraction. And our decimal is 8 hundredths. Well, as a fraction, we can write that as 8 over 100. And now we want to make sure that our number on the left is a fraction with the same denominator. It already is a fraction, but its denominator is 25. So what can we do to make that fraction have a denominator of 100? We can multiply the numerator and denominator by 4. That will change this fraction into 12 one hundredths. Now we can see we both have them in the form of a fraction and they have the same denominator. And when fractions have the same denominator, we just need to compare their numerators. And since 12 is greater than 8, we can see that 3 25ths is greater than 8 hundredths. Now we have two fractions to compare again, but they're two different types of fractions. On the left, we have 19 over 8, and we can see that it's an improper fraction. Whenever the numerator is larger than the denominator, we call it an improper fraction. And on the right, we have 2 and 3 eighths. That one is a mixed fraction. It has an integer part, which is the 2 in front, and then it has the fraction part, 3 eighths. Let's see how we can set these up in the same format to compare them. Our first strategy will have both numbers set up as mixed fractions. So let's look at the fraction on the left and see how we can change that one into a mixed fraction. We're first going to set it up as long division dividing the numerator by the denominator. So we have 19 divided by 8. 8 goes into 19 two times. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract that. We have a remainder of 3. Now we're going to take each part of our answer and use that to set up our mixed fraction. The whole number part of our answer, of our quotient there, will become the whole number of our mixed fraction. The remainder of 3 will be the numerator, 
and our 8 will remain as the denominator. So it will look like this, 2 and 3 eighths. And now we'll compare that to our other number. Well look, they're both the same number. Now that we have them in the same format, we can compare them. And we can see that they're actually the same number. So we'll put an equal sign there. Okay, so if these two mixed fractions are equal, then that means our original numbers are equal as well. So 19 eighths is equal to 2 and 3 eighths. Now let's see what happens if we take those same two fractions, but we compare them in the form of improper fractions. So we're going to take the fraction on the right, the mixed fraction, and convert that into an improper fraction. To do that, we multiply the whole number times the denominator. So 2 times 8 will give us 16. And then we add the numerator, which becomes 19. So 2 times 8 is 16. At 3, we get 19. That will be the numerator of our improper fraction. And then we keep the same denominator of 8. So now we have 19 eighths compared to 19 eighths and they're equal to each other. So that means our original fractions are equal to each other as well. So now we can see whether we made both fractions into mixed fractions or made both of them into improper fractions. We still end up with the same result. So far, all of the numbers that we've been comparing in this lesson have been positive numbers, but sometimes we'll come across negative numbers as well. So let's take a look at this number line and see how we can use that to help us understand how we'll compare positive and negative numbers to each other. Well, if we notice, all of the negative numbers are to the left side of the number line. And as we move to the left side, the numbers become smaller. So that means that all negative numbers are going to be less than zero. We have zero there in the middle, and all the negative numbers are to the left of zero. And all of the negative numbers are less than all of the positive numbers. Another pattern that we can see is that all of the positive numbers are greater than zero because all the positive numbers in green on the right side are to the right of zero. And all of the positive numbers are greater than all of the negative numbers. Now, this might seem a little bit obvious to state this, but it's really going to come in handy when you come across numbers that are positive and negative and you need to compare them. It can save you some time by just focusing on the sign of the number and not even having to look at the actual numbers themselves. Now we're going to use that concept to compare these two numbers. We have negative 3 and 2 sevenths compared to 9 fifteenths. If we just look at the number part, we can see that we have two different types of fractions. We have a mixed fraction and a proper fraction. They also have different denominators. So if we're just focusing on the numbers to make our comparison, we would have quite a bit of work to do to get these numbers in the same format with the same denominator. But before we do that, let's take a look at their signs. The number on the left is negative. The number on the right is positive. And we just learned that all negative numbers are less than all positive numbers. So that's all we need to know to make this comparison. So we'll say that negative 3 and 2 sevenths is less than 9 fifteenths. Now for this example, we have two fractions again, and they both have negative signs. We have negative 4 fifths compared to negative one-third. So the first thing that we're going to do is make these fractions have a common denominator. 
we can't just focus on the signs this time because they're both negative numbers. So we're going to have to look at the number part of these fractions to help us out. So how can we make sure both numbers have the same denominator? One has a 5 and one has a 3 as the denominator. Well, a common multiple of 5 and 3 is 15. So let's make sure both fractions have a denominator of 15. We can do that by multiplying the fraction on the left by 3 in its numerator and denominator. That will make this fraction into negative 12 over 15. And for the fraction on the right, we need to make sure that it also has a denominator of 15. And we can do that by multiplying its numerator and denominator by 5. This fraction will become negative 5 over 15. So now we can compare these two fractions. They have the same denominator. So now all we need to do is focus on the numerator. Now keep in mind though that we do have those negative signs in front of the whole fraction. So what we're going to do is apply that negative sign to the numerator. So we're going to look at this as negative 12 and negative 5 to compare our numerators. And negative 12 is less than negative 5. If we saw these numbers on a number line, negative 12 would be farther to the left. So that means that it's less than the negative 5. So we can apply our less than symbol to our negative 12 fifteenths and negative 5 fifteenths, but that also means that our original fractions would need the less than symbol as well. So negative 4 fifths is less than negative 1 third.